So today I'm kind of bringing you a little showcase of the Conjuration Frozen Orb Sork. This build is insane. We got this thing together with very minimal gear. We've only masterworked our items to level four just to kind of showcase what I would like. The Paragon board is kind of set with a, we kind of need to change it a little bit, but this build does absolutely everything that you would want to see on your screen. Just many, many, you know, up to 20 Conjurations on the screen with our brand new big, huge bonus here on our skill tree for the uh, Conjuration Mastery that has been changed. We're going to gain 4% multiplicative damage, movement speed, and mana regen for each Conjuration. We get our Conjurations up to 20. So what I'm going to do real quick, as you guys all know, is we're just going to kind of break this stuff down. I'm going to break it down very loosely, and then we're going to do a full showcase inside of the uh, pit, or as we all know, Greater Rifts. We're probably going to do a Tier 50 just to kind of showcase how strong it is. Uh, the build just absolutely slaps, and you're going to be spawning many, many conjurations. So, real quick, uh, this, of course, this is all subject to change, guys, before you get ahead of yourselves. This is all subject to change. So, we're going to break down the skills very, very quickly. Firebolt, we just need two points in here. We max out Frozen Orb into Greater for the vulnerability. Uh, we, If you have any mana issues, you just go Destructive. Uh, then we're doing Devastation into Elemental Dominance for even more damage. We're doing one point into Flame Shield, although I really do love the Mythical Flame Shield change. After it ends, you stun everything around you, and your next hit is a guaranteed crit strike. If I had more points, I would probably do that, but it is what it is. Of course, Teleport into the Damage Reduction with Shimmering, although the new change to Mythical Teleport is actually pretty solid. This is actually kind of busted on Ball Lightning. We max out Glass Cannon. However, if you feel like you're taking too much damage, take the points out of this, put them in here, and just put more points into Teleport. Uh, elemental attunement to reset now we're doing <clears throat> hydra here into summon hydra to burn okay um we really like the addition of the burn over the seconds our conjurations are going to be doing a lot of damage so we kind of want as many points as we possibly can in here although invoked hydra is also very good but i think summon hydra is actually really is just better we got three points into that we max out precision because we do need lucky hit one point to align the elements as well as three into damage reduction here after 100 mana, which is very easy with Frozen Orb. Two into protection, although you probably could break this down and just take points out, right? And we could max Hydra this way. Although, I I don't know. I really don't feel like you need it that badly, but we already do an insane amount of damage. Uh, max out Conjuration Mastery. Uh, max out Lightning Spear into Invoked for um, the stun. Ice Blades into Summon Ice Blades for cooldown. Then we're going to come down here. No ultimate, but we are maxing out Permafrost for more damage. Icy Touch for more damage, as well as Horror Frost for more damage. Again, if you are having issues with mana, you can put Frigid Breeze on. What I would just do here is just take another point out of Hydra, or you take one point out of either Protection or Mana Shield, and just put one point into here. Five mana is, is just insane, but one secret stat that I'm going to show you guys on my gear piece is going to change why you don't actually need this, okay? And then, of course, our key passive of choice is going to be Avalanche, okay? So now let's go into the gear choices and what I have here, my gear stats that I have on the build if you guys really want to mimic it. All right, I am going to go kind of slow here because people always complain about not seeing the stat line, so let's talk about it. So on our helmet, we're doing the brand new power, which is the concentration power. Casting a conjuration skill grants you damage reduction for five seconds i do have the min roll here i have not been able to find another one i do want to mention that throughout the ptr that with our codex of power whenever you start a brand new character it completely resets this this is a crazy bug it completely resets this uh devs do something about it i don't know um but we're doing concentration here now the reason that we're doing concentration here is because if you eventually want to put in a shako or a god slayer you know, particularly a Shaco, you're going to get the damage reduction. Even though it's going to be 5% less on the high end, you're still going to be able to have the damage reduction so you're not losing out here. Um, but we have Intelligence, Armor, Poison Resist, Stun Duration, and Total Armor. However, in Tempering, I would really want to get rid of Stun Duration. All right. Uh, I have not found all the different manuals that you can over here on Tempering uh, for the helmet. It kind of sucks with the utility. I'm kind of missing it. But if you go into here under this, if we go to utility, right, we're kind of missing a couple. 
we're like missing a couple here like this let's see what are we missing rogue rogue like we're missing some like other ones and i don't know why we have not found them yet but it kind of is what it is you know i really wish they would have just given us these to test but it is it's whatever so uh and then total armor because we want to get our armor as close to 13k as we can we're going to achieve this with disobedience on our pants next of course is raiment this is going to be a very easy item that you're going to be able to get especially in world tier three so uh of course we're all the stats stay the same on here when we teleport we're going to just pull in and just destroy stuff now in our gloves we are doing frozen orb we're maxing this okay get the highest one you possibly can 60 percent does more damage we're doing intelligence crit strike damage frozen orb and then damage and then crowd control again because utility on here just really sucks um obviously crowd control duration is probably the best one to get because we are freezing and stunning a lot and chilling so having that duration on there just makes it easier for us as a sorceress now disobedience in the pants okay now eventually you are going to swap this with tabalt tabalt is still the best in slot um pants in the game i don't care what anybody says i know that they nerfed it from a 40 percent damage increase down to 20 but the fact that you're still getting a huge damage bonus main stat on there and then you're getting the additional power stat up to 20 percent it's too much to ignore you're getting damage reduction and you're getting uh of course the resource generation on there to replenish your resource which is just it's just the best in slot but until then we're gonna rock disobedience on here um with as many places as you as you can put not only regular armor but total armor disobedience as well as juggernaut is going to kind of feel like it felt you know like falls by the wayside because once you get these like items master working to 12 like i'm already at eleven thousand right now without the bonus from disobedience so getting to the cap of 13 thousand three hundred now that is the minimum cap the pit does go to level 200 so you're going to get more armor on top of that but for right now you're going to want intelligence max life armor you really want crowd control duration over freeze and then total armor in the boots we're doing ghost walkers now you do have some other options here i just prefer ghost walkers because it's just it's just great having the additional move speed but more importantly being able to move freely between stuff is just a blast however flicker step is really good but we're not doing anything here to reset um an ultimate however the brand new boots i think are really stellar the Yen's Blessings, casting a skill has a chance to cast a non-mobility, non-ultimate skill on cooldown, which means that it would re, uh, it could recast our Flame Shield, a Lightning Spear, Ice Blades, or a Hydra in this build, which I think is very, very good. Not only do we get the uh, movement speed, but we get a chance to replenish um, resource on a lucky hit, damage reduction, vulnerable damage, and then casting that this is a very very strong option to have in here if you don't care about ghost walkers or having another ability so i'm going to kind of showcase both of these and we can level one up but uh the brand new boots the yen's blessings are actually pretty dope but otherwise you do intelligence move speed a resistance if you need help on that of course crowd control duration if you can get it again and then move speed on to our weapon we're doing conceited conceited is by far one of the best damage dealing powers for the sorcerer i really haven't found another one that works better than this i just have a shit roll uh but we are doing conceited you want intelligence damage crit strike damage damage chance now this is very important on both of our main hand and offhand chance of for frozen or projectiles to be cast twice okay we have that on there and on our offhand so right now we have a 15 plus another 17 so we got a 32 percent chance to really cast frozen orb to be cast twice for free so we got that on here i'm doing storm swell intelligence chris strike chance cooldown damage chance to be casting frozen orb twice now storm swell is really just a huge flex if you're still having issues with your mana as you're playing the build then you're going to move serpentine down to uh the offhand and you're going to be putting uh you're going to put where is it Oh, I must move it. You're going to put prodigies on here on your ring for a chance, you know, to replenish your mana when you use a, a, a defensive skill or a cooldown. So uh, we got Storm Swell here. You want intelligence, Chris Strike, chance, cooldown, damage, frozen. Of course, Tal Rashes, super obvious, very easy to get. You can get this and Remnants both from Varshan, super easy to do. Uh, on our ring, we pretty got, we got a BA ring, guys. We got intelligence, resource cost reduction, damage, and resource generation. 
resource generation is very very important on a build like this because frozen orb does cost a lot i mean 35 mana is pretty insane now you can get a bunch of different rolls for mana cost reduction but however resource gen just really is better in my opinion now the secret tech here is mana on kill okay you're going to be killing things so fast that mana on kill at five is just insane when you blow up an entire pack imagine blowing up a pack of like 10 monsters and you're getting 50 mana like and you barely even casted some of your skills like it's just this is the secret tech definitely put this on here also um this is just a place order placeholder for starless skies once we would get starless skies here you'd move serpentine down to the offhand and boom you're good to go but on the ring, we got Serpentine. The reason for this is because we can have one additional Hydra. Now, they did make a change to Hydra as far as the skill. We get two Hydras, so we have a maximum of three at a time, which the more Conjurations that we have, the more damage that we do. And of course, brand new Fractured Winter Glass. This build does work without this. However, this is what takes it into overdrive, okay? Not only do we get the Conjuration Masteries, uh, non-physical vulnerable damage, cooldown reduction is huge, but here's the roll. Casting Frozen Orb has a chance to spawn a random Conjuration, which is huge, when it explodes, and then on a lucky hit, our Conjurations have a chance to launch Frozen Orb. So imagine casting a Frozen Orb, we have a chance for it to cast two more, three more, which is really like five, and then each of those have a chance to launch a Conjuration, which in turn will launch another conjurate or another Frozen Orb, which in turn just, it, it, it's just literally insane. Our, our screen is filled with frozen orbs and conjurations so uh that is the gear pieces guys if you want to freeze those you definitely can or just you know, like screenshot it next is the paragon board i'm not going to go too in depth into this as i normally do but i will highlight the main things here okay clear all so what what i did for the paragon board shout out to demon muppets in my community for helping me with this uh so the gems that we're using are conjurer for more conjuration skill damage control enchanter elementalist destruction as well as reinforced now our main like bonuses our legendary nodes are elemental summoner our current bonus is 59 percent, which is absolutely insane and then we're also taking ice fall for a little more frost skill damage against vulnerable enemies which could be 30 percent if they're frozen i really do like this um however you could probably drop a lot probably drop ice falls but i really do enjoy it and then of course we have frigid fate for even more um, vulnerable damage bonus it's it's kind of insane but um if you guys want i can make a link to this down in the description below i will try to do that for mobilitics but now let's get into the bread and butter let's go ahead and go do a tier 50 just so you guys can kind of see how the build plays out it's very very simple you're going to cast conjurations you're going to spam them all the time and then you're just going to launch frozen orbs and we're going to do this in every build video. We're just going to do a quick showcase because it takes us about two to three minutes to do these at this level, which is just kind of nuts. So you're just you're literally just going to drop your conjurations and just blast. You're just going to blast. Oh, I did forget to mention that my two enchantment slots, my two enchantment slots, my two enchantment slots are frozen orb, of course, and then teleport. However, if you do swap into Ice Blades as an enchantment slot, that is very, very good for even more cooldown. But I like with Remnants to be able to just, you know, dash and teleport because of the boots. I know that they changed teleport to a 17% or 17 second. Oh, 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 I'm frozen. I'm frozen. No, no, no. A 17 second cooldown in your... And on your evade, which is silly. I don't know why the devs want to take away all of our fun stuff. Uh, but even with attacks on cooldown, I'm not even going to grab any shrines because that we don't even need it. We don't even need it. The build is just it, the build is just insane, man. Look at that! All the frozen orbs. You're just spamming. A big point of this build too is your your hydras are going to be a huge portion of your damage as well. Huge portion of your damage. And this is a 150 or this is a 50 guys. I mean we haven't pushed it to the absolute limit yet, but now I will say there is one thing about these bosses that I kind of hate. 
Like, there's a lot of one-shotting in these bosses, which is kind of annoying. But, uh... Watch out for those shadows, man. I always try to make sure I run away. But yeah, guys, the build is just nuts. The build is nuts. This is by far going to be the funnest build coming in Season 4 for Sorcerer Remains like myself. So, guys... Go have some fun. I'll have all this down there. Again, I've got my attack power up to almost 80,000 on the high end because of how many conjurations that we have down on the screen. It's kind of busted. When you cast, you're going to see this number go up. This is the number you're looking for. We can get this thing to, to almost 20, 22, which if you think about it, 22 times the 4% that we have, that is a lot of damage. Let me go to my calculator because I suck at math. I'm just kidding. That's 80% increased damage. It's just absolutely insane, <laughs> insane man. We, I, I think we pretty much speed cap. But yeah, guys, this has been the best build that I've had so far in the PTR. Um, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.